Hi, I'm Matt with Schematical, and today I'm here to talk to you about my new stable diffusion project called DrawnBy.ai. So me and a buddy of mine, Dominic, were talking about five months ago. I think I actually, I had started working on this thing for a couple months, and he saw some of the stuff I was generating with it, and I uh, did a video, I think, on Shay, where I had put my pup in and generated some images of her. And Dominic said, people love pets, we got to make this into a business. And so we created a startup called drawnby.ai. But the cool thing is I'm open sourcing all of this so you at home can play along. You can boot up your own stable diffusion pipelines on AWS using Terraform, all of it for free. So that stuff is free and open source and out there to anybody. If you need help, hop on the Discord. Um, there's links in the readme, ways to reach out to me and get help. So I'm here to help you. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in running stable diffusion or I mean, it could be any PyTorch stuff on AWS, for cheap. forget that uh, SageMaker stuff. The SageMaker's all right, but I got some hacks to keep the cost down for you. And I'll get more into that later. So again, I'm Matt with Schematical. Let's kick this off. So this is www.drawnby.ai. I say that mainly with the www, so you remember it's a website. Some people uh, aren't getting that since it's not a .com. Not important. You go ahead, you upload some photos of your pup. Here's a bunch of photos of Shay. And then you go ahead and sign up. You pick your URL. You pop in your email. You type in a password. And you do some final proof. Delete any ones you don't want in there. And send it. You give it about 20 minutes so it can run the training off the images that you gave it. It learns your dog's face, basically. And then you have puppy pictures of your pet as an astronaut or modern art. This is totally Shay's expression there. Look at that. Cool eyes. This, we can call this oil painting Shay. That's a cool one right there. Cowboy Shay. Pixar Shay. That's Pixar Shay for sure. 100%. Even the striped down and little white eyebrows. That's cool. Modern art Shay. Oh, that one's a bit crazy eyed. We'll have some fun with it. And then Captain Shay. Shay kind of is the boss around here, I'll admit. You can download it, you can share it on social medias, you can copy a URL, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. If you're having trouble using it, just go ahead and chat us up here or on the Discord. But let's get more into how the back end works for those of you more technical minded out there. The whole thing is in Terraform. You can find it github.com slash schematical slash sc dash terraform the sc stands for schematical consulting if you need help with this contact me i do consult on this in here i've got my whole project laid out so this sets up a lot of things in schematical so i'm not going to go through every single detail here instead i'm going to zoom in on the important parts specifically chaos pixel so you you're familiar i already told you about drawnby.ai drawnby.ai is a front end specifically designed for the pet users to help facilitate them going through this i also have chaos pixel in there chaos pixel if you go way back in my youtube channel is a project i tried to basically do exactly this except uh, generating video game images instead of using dogs we've repurposed it and it can do many things now and it's basically a wrapper for stable diffusion right now. The meat and beans of this stuff is in the AWS Batch PyTorch GPU service. So that's what I'm going to try and focus on. All these other things are pretty awesome, but everything you need to run on AWS is in this module here. By the way, if you don't know what Terraform is, there are a million good videos on it. The basic how-tos, all that stuff. I might do one eventually, but I don't have any right now. So just YouTube up somebody else's video on it. I'll try and put a good one in the show notes if I find one. What we need is first thing is an AWS batch compute environment. For those of you guys that don't know what batch is, batch is a way on AWS to run long running Docker container jobs. So big, heavy stuff. So for us right here, you can see we're running inference requests. That's what the I requests are. This one only takes a minute and 18 seconds, but if we were to do a training job, that could take upwards of, this one only took 11 minutes, but sometimes they take up to 20 minutes. And so batch is a great way to do that. And we can get GPU instances in here, but it's tricky. You can't use Fargate. So if you're familiar with Fargate, sorry, June, 2023, 
Fargate does not support GPU usage. So we have to use EC2 instances, which I'll get into in a minute. But basically, to run something the size of the training stuff, we need something much more powerful. And AWS Batch is awesome. So if you use SageMaker, which SageMaker is a lovely tool that AWS offers. And last I checked for SageMaker, if you're going to do inference and you're going to have an endpoint that can run this thing that's beefy enough to run stable diffusion in its current state, you had to have an always on instance. That means that you're paying hourly for this thing that's always on versus my setup. It shuts down when you're not using it. it, saves you a lot of money. So only when you've got people using it, are you paying for it? So the first thing we're going to do is set up a batch compute environment. In here, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this right now, but I do all the little details for you. Make sure your subnet groups are all set up. Uh, you, The subnet groups and security groups do kind of build off of this VPC module over here. So you probably want to set that up too. And again, those if you pull through this stuff, you can do it. Uh, pull it, strip that stuff out of there. Happy to help you again. If you get stuck, reach out to me. Um, this is just an instance profile. Uh, I am rule, so it can access what it needs to access. So it needs to be able to access uh, these mount targets. So that's part of my secret sauce. I add in these EFS file system drives so it caches some of the information so you don't have to re-download the model every two seconds. Uh, it's really nice. And here's some security groups for it, basic security groups. Uh, if you're not familiar, security groups are like firewall rules. It sets up your ECR repository, which is what's going to build your image too. Now, if you don't know much about Docker, don't worry too much about it. I already have given you a Docker file right here. So we'll get into that in a minute. This will build itself according to the instructions in the build spec here. So after the ECR repository, which is the Docker repository, you go ahead and create some log groups. We create a batch job definition. So this is what tells the container what it's got access to, what it's running. So we pass in some environment variables right there. We pass in the roles, we pass in the image, which is a reference to that repository, set up logs, set up the basic GPU stuff. We're only going to do one GPU right now and eight virtual CPUs and however much memory that is. And feel free to change this stuff and fork this and modify it how you like. Here's the mount points. That's my secret sauce right there. So this uh, makes it so you've cached certain things that it would otherwise install every single time. And it makes it so... These things run a lot faster when they boot up and you don't have nearly as much junk in the Docker image. So, and we can only run on EC2. We cannot run on Fargate. Remember that basic tags, some timeouts. Uh, I should make that a variable. Feel free to fork that if you want to. And we set up the IAM rules for that. So it can access the log groups, etc. get to the S3 buckets, so on and so forth. Then we set up a job queue. So the job queue is what we were looking at before, where it tells you what's queued up to run. So that way, these things can run in parallel. You can boot up as much compute power as you want. This is meant to be scalable. So if you wanted to go to production with this and have an always on system, this will do that. If you wanted to have it as just a, only turns on when someone uses it and you're okay with the boot up times, and it'll save you a bunch of money, you can do that. So you've got options here. Here's some of the EFS stuff for the file system. I'm gonna go over that pretty fast. It's simple stuff and that's it. Now, here's something very key is we set up a build pipeline. So that build pipeline is technically this build pipeline. So for those of you guys that don't know, I've handled all the CI CD stuff for you. So this thing will literally build itself once you boot it up. So that way you guys don't even have to really know too much about how this all works, or at least you've got, you can script kitty it and just, you know, take what I've done. Cause this all builds, this stuff actually builds and runs. So let's look at the variables real quick. So right now it's set to this exact repo and the build spec is the path to this exact build spec. So this build spec right here, We'll go ahead and build your first it'll log you into Docker using the IAM rules that we've already just spawned up. So you're good to go there. And it'll be able to upload the Docker image that's built to ECS, sorry, ECR. And so what it does is it'll build using the Docker file here. It'll tag it, it'll push it, and it'll send it up off to be run. So that way you can start doing your own stable diffusion stuff. <laughs> You start generating your own images, training your own models. Let's look at the Docker file. So we're using just NVIDIA, uh, CUDA. I did all this stuff so you guys don't have to worry about this. Um, you can pre-build a base image if you'd like to. This is a bit advanced. Uh, again, if you have questions about this, leave a comment or better yet, come find me on Discord. Happy to help. Uh, right here, we do some basic installation. Um, we've got Node in there to do some 
back and forth management. You could probably do this without Node if you're a real Python wizard, which I am not. And then we go ahead and we run the install SRC, which is in scripts here. So it runs this install that installs everything. And again, it, went, it should save a lot of that stuff to the cache. The first time this thing runs, by the way, it'll download a bunch of stuff. So it's gonna be real slow the first time it runs. But if you're doing a production product, just remember that and run it before you send it out to your people, before you start getting other people on it. So here we're just chmodding some scripts that are gonna run um, to checkpoint. We, we're not even using Relay anymore, but you can use that. Uh, then we just use your you know basic install, all this stuff here. We make sure that Conda's path variables are set. Uh, so those of you guys that are familiar with Python, you're gonna want Conda to be all set up so you can have your environment going. We mount the magic volumes I was talking about earlier. So these are the ones that cache stuff. So we these thing runs a lot faster. And then it's uh, run.js is our run. So, And this is just a basic script that takes in some arguments and then calls Python with the right stuff again. You probably could do it all in Python uh, if you want to. If someone wants to fork it and do that, be my guess. Um, if you don't, you know, so you could just have your Docker file call, you know, uh, run.py or whatever, and uh, it should fire it off. So we're not going to go through all these scripts in that much detail. If you have more questions, ask. If you if you have, you know, I, I'm happy to make more content on the internet. So please uh, ask away if you're at, at all interested. But yeah, that's the basics of this AWS Batch PyTorch GPU service. Probably do more videos on the details of the other things like the build pipeline, CloudFront, Lambda service. I even have SageMaker serverless in here and a SageMaker one, which I found out was going to be too expensive. So happy to do videos on all those. I should probably show you how to kick off a job and run it. So you can use the UI, which is pretty self-explanatory, or you can use the AWS SDK to fire it off, which is more likely. You just wire this into whatever API code you've got running. So here we go. We create a submit job request. We use the job definition that was created in Terraform. We can name it whatever you want it to be called. You can set up for the job queue. Again, you're going to reference whatever was created in Terraform. You can override the commands from <clears throat> you can override the commands, the environment variables, all sorts of things, and then you just call submit job. Pretty pretty simple. This is my code. Additionally, you can always submit a job by using the UI, which is fine for testing, but I would not go to production with that. For specifics on what arguments exactly to send it, see the run.js here. It uh, helps break it down for you. All right, so that's how I did it, at least in a nutshell. There's a ton more details of how Chaos Pixel works in the back end, but that should get you to the point where you can run this yourself. Now, if you made it this far, I'm guessing you're pretty technical, uh, but if you're a pet lover, please check out www.drawnby.ai. I guess it is a website. And uh, feel free to hop in the Discord if you have questions, leave questions in the comments. If you wanna see me expand on any of these things, these topics, please, comment away. I read and respond to every comment because my YouTube channel is not that popular yet, but it will be. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I'm Matt with Schematical. Have a great day. I'm, I'm going to come up with a better sign-off line. If you have a better sign-off line, let me know.